بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرض أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين ورحمة الله وبركاته For some time I have been planning to start a series on uh, family upbringing of children and uh, I was looking for uh, useful resources, topics to discuss. This Muharram for some family issues, I am in Qom, and I thought it is a good time to, uh, inshallah, uh, give life to that idea. So inshallah in this Muharram we will have a series on family and Mahdavi pedagogy. I am hesitant to say um, uh, just upbringing or just education so I use the term pedagogy and inshallah what we are going to discuss in this series will be based on some uh, good research done in Qom which led to the publication of a very useful book which is called Khanewade wa Tarbiyat Mahdavi. Inshallah, I will follow the order of the book, and if Inshallah Allah gives me tawfiq, I will also try to share my own uh, ideas and experiences with you. So we put our trust in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and start this series Bismillah. What we are going to discuss, inshallah, is first we will discuss the significance of family. Although we have had different opportunities to talk about family in Islam, in Islamic plan for life, in a series, in Islamic lifestyle series, and you know, sometimes one off lectures on family, but Whatever we say, it's not doing justice in all Abrahamic tradition, in all divine and even non-divine human traditions. Family has always been significant. Unfortunately, we live in a time that maybe for the first time in the history of mankind, we see uh, family is so much subject to uh, attacks, to risks, to dangers. And this is actually what we need the most when we move towards the end of the time, our need for a strong, re you know, reliable, uh, love filled, light filled uh, families become more and more, but unfortunately to our surprise, we see our families are in danger, are under attack. No community is safe and immune to these dangers. So we need to talk, we need to educate ourselves, we need to have lots of programs in order to re-emphasize on the significance of family and then 
to prepare for having families which are able to uh, function and help in preparation for coming of Imam Zaman Sharif. So we will talk about family from different perspectives, but with a flavor of the doctrine of Al Mahdi Sharif with the uh, fragrance and the light of Imam Mahdi Sharif inshallah. So we will talk about family and in particular we will talk about the challenges of family in Akhir uh, zaman and what should we do in a general way. Then we'll have a detailed discussion inshallah. In the second section we will talk about uh, Mahdabi pedagogy. What does it mean? Why our pedagogy needs to be more specific? What is the situation in Akhir zaman that make us more uh, focused on Imam of our time? Although Always people have to refer to divine leaders in the time of prophets and messengers and their successors. But particularly in our time, we need to be more oriented towards the doctrine of Al-Mahdi and prepare ourselves for that and benefit also from that. So we will talk about uh, the Mah doctrine of Al-Mahdi and Mahdavi pedagogy. Then in the third section, inshallah, we will talk about some of the factors that contribute to this kind of pedagogy. We have very, inshallah, good discussions. And then, inshallah, we will have the fifth section, which is how to prepare for having children who would be uh, trained and developed and educated in this way. When we say preparation because this is about even before marriage and before having children. Then in the sixth section we will talk about the first seven years of children's life and how this kind of approach to pedagogy uh, should be brought into uh, action and actually leading our tarbiya work. Then, inshallah, in the seventh section, we will talk about the seven uh, years after the first, means the second seven years from eight to uh, 14. And then in the eighth section, we will talk about the third seven years, which is very important. And this is the uh, teenage and early young uh, age and how parents should uh, try to, inshallah, have uh, their role played. Of course, no one can guarantee, and no one is responsible for what children actually at the end become, but our job is to do all the necessary work that we as parents can do. The rest is between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, today we start with significance of family. There are things that might be familiar to you and it may inshallah at least serve as a good reminder but there is also maybe some kind of systematic approach to family and I hope th this discussion will uh, make all of us appreciate more the families to which be we belong and also for those people who can uh, marry and establish family, I hope this would make them understand that this is a very important step, that they should prepare for it and be ready for it when the time comes. Especially men should not be hesitant because sometimes I see some men are hesitant and uh, because they 
should you know go and make the proposal so if they don't take the initiative if they don't show uh, readiness then we will have big problem so i hope those who can marry and feel in themselves that they have become mature and responsible would do what they can for inshallah forming a new family in addition to the family that they belong to so let us start with a general view to the creation human family is not the only manifestation of family life we have this in uh, other living beings that they are in pair and even beyond Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah al-variyat أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ومن كل شيء خلقنا زوجين لعلكم تذكرون. From everything we have created pairs so that you may remember. Allah has no partner. Allah is single. But Everything which is created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is created in pair. Maybe this, of course, means everything that is in this universe that is familiar to us in this physical, material world. This is where we, for the first you know, um, encounter, we notice, although existence is much greater than this physical world. So, we don't want to go into that discussion uh, in the books of Tafsir. They have explained what does it mean, and how they have brought it even to the level of atom and, you know, the uh, subatoms. Uh, particulars. What we want to say is that family life or living in pair and supplementing each other is not an exception for human beings, rather it is a the general uh, paradigm. And in harmony with this general paradigm, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also prescribed marriage and forming family in all divine uh, religious laws or shara'ir and in all scriptures. In the famous uh, khutbah for marriage, the sermon for marriage that is attributed to Imam Rida alayhi salam, Imam refers to some uh, important uh, text but then he says if we didn't have anything in the Quran or Sunnah still we as human beings through our fitra we would understand that marriage is very important forming family is very important so it's not that just we learn it from the scriptures or from the Sunnah we learn it in different ways on different levels so, there is a general plan in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then now we focus on human family. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in the Quran that family is not only limited to this worldly life. Family starts in this worldly life but continues up to heaven inshallah so it is the oldest human institution 
but it is also the most enduring human institution, which is not only continuing till death, it survives death and continues all the way up to heaven. In Surah Ra'd, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Jannatu adnin yadkhulunaha wa man salaha min abaihim wa azwajihim wa dhurriyatihim. They enter gardens of paradise, but not alone. And also man salaha, whoever is qualified. So the people who are qualified, they go to heaven, and among their relatives, those who are qualified also will be together in heaven. Min abaihim wa wa Their fathers and parents in general, their children and progeny, and their spouses. وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ يَدْخُلُونَ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ بَابَ These heavenly families are visited by the angels from every door, from every gate that is there for their palace in heaven, they will be visited by the angels. So angels are not leaving them alone and are not just visiting them from one entrance. It means that all the gates to their palace are gates that are attracting angels. And I think this is actually the situation in dunya also. Such families which are virtuous and faithful and righteous even in dunya are visited by angels. It's not just in the heaven, but in heaven, it's much more stronger, much more enjoyable, because the level of understanding, the level of encounter are higher. And then there is a key message here. Salamun alaykum bima sabartum. Peace be upon you because of your patience. Family life needs patience. Of course, even those who don't live in family, they have to be patient. But sometimes people may be short-sighted and they think, okay, if I'm not married, I don't have that much responsibility, you know, children, etc. you know, problems, you know, one becomes ill, one becomes, you know, I don't know, uh, maybe jobless, you know, homeless, etc. one has family issues, you know, all headache, you know, it's better if I don't marry at all. First of all, make sure, be 100% sure that there is no way that you would avoid challenges of life. It's life is with challenges. But when you form family, you have lots of protection. You have lots of support and your challenges become sacred. And they are so important that the angels are proud of you. Salamun alaykum bima sabartum. If you have difficulty in your relation with your husband or wife or in-laws or I don't know, there are difficulties with children, with parents, siblings, etc. But you act with patience and the way that Allah wants, these are all raising your rank and angels stress on this why we visit you why you are here and why we visit you
because of your sacred patience. Fana'ma uqbattar. This end which is being in heaven is very great. You shouldn't think your efforts in dunya would be forgotten or ignored or overlooked or be rewarded a little. What can be better reward than being in heaven? Close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, close to all the chosen servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So family life continues even up to heaven. Uh, the late Alama Tabatabai Ridwanullah Ta'ala Alai in volume 19 of Al Mizan has discussion that children who are mu'min, so they follow their parents in Iman, but in actions may have shortcomings and may not match their parents. They are not as good as their parents. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would raise their level so that they can be with their parents. Quran refers to this, but we need someone like Allah Metabatabai to expand and explain to us in the light of the Quran and Hadith so that we are sure about our understanding. Otherwise the root is in the Quran mentioned in Surah Tur, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this beautiful ayah, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَاتَّبَعَتْهُمْ ذُرِّيَّتُهُمْ بِإِيمَانِ Those who are faithful and their children also, the progeny follow them بإيمان in faith. So they are also mu'min, but they are not like them, like the parents. أَتْبَعْ أَلْحَقْنَا بِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ أَلْحَقْنَا بِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ This is where Allah explains, and I will mention a certain hadith. If someone reads says, we make them join their parents, maybe someone doesn't understand. But it means that they are themselves not able to be with their parents. We help them join their parents. But is this by reducing the reward of parents and distributing what they deserve all over the family and progeny? No. Quran says, وَمَا أَلَتْنَاهُمْ مِنْ عَمَلِهِمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ And we don't reduce what they have done. Anything is not going to be uh, you know, reduced. So what parents have done will be registered for their progeny who are mu'min and no one is going to lose anything. So if they didn't have this, they were not higher. It's not that they bring them lower so that they can be all together, they take a, make an, a kind of average. No. It's the beauty of family. If someone in family rises, will raise the whole family. This hadith also confirms this understanding. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is quoted as saying, إِذَا دَخَلَ الرَّجُلُ الْجَنَّةِ سَأَلَ عَنْ أَبَوَيْهِ when a person enters heaven, inshallah, Allah 
grants this tawfiq and honor, inshallah, to all of you, inshallah. Would ask about his parents. Where are my parents? There is love, there is concern, there is care. Mu'minin don't forget each other. Even in some lectures I have said that when the Quran says, Yawma yafirru al-mar, the day a person runs away from his brother, you know, mother, progeny, etc. I said this is not for Mu'minin. Mu'minin would never run away from each other. Quran says, al aduv illal muttaqin. Friends become enemies except muttaqin. Muttaqin, they never become enemies. They remain always as friends. And even in the next world, their friendship will become stronger. So these people, when they go to heaven, they don't say, okay, alhamdulillah, let us enjoy and then forget about the family. No. Sa'ala an ababwai. We will ask about parents. Wa zawjati, about his wife. Wa wuldihi, and his children. Fayuqalu lahu innahum lam yablugu darajataka wa amalak. He would be said, they have not reached your daraja and your action, your rank and your deeds. They are not at your level. So they don't qualify to be here. You are in a place, in a position that they cannot be here. فَيَقُولُ رَبِّهِ قَدْ عَمِلْتُ لِي وَلَهُمْ my Lord, whatever I did in dunya was for me and for them. When you embrace others in your niya, your reward is not going to be reduced. This is one of the great manifestations of Allah's mercy. I hope, inshallah, one day we can bring all these manifestations of mercy of Allah together. Uh, we have done some of it in series on mercy, but there are much more. So one sign of his, his great you know, mercy is that when you say, I did this for myself and for my family, my father, mother, you know, children, my spouse, Allah wouldn't say, okay, now we divide. No. Why to divide? This is not the way Allah with his generosity treats us. فَيَقُولُ رَبِّ قَدْ عَمِلْتُ لِي وَلَهُمْ I have done for myself and for them. فَيُؤْمَرُ بِإِلْحَاقِهِمْ بِهِ And there will be a command to make them join him. Not bring him down half the way and raise them half the way so that they can meet. No. Al-haqna, we said in the Quran, Al-haqna bihim thurriyatahum wa ma alatnahum min amalihim. We don't reduce from their actions. So, Family is the oldest human institution which is in line with the universal paradigm in creation and also is the most enduring institution. It continues all the way up to heaven. And then if God forbids, if family is broken, you can imagine what's going to happen. Inshallah, in the next session we will talk about this and we continue the discussion about family and then we talk about family in Akhir zaman We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us more grateful to the gift of family life that alhamdulillah is still among Muslims among uh, other Abrahamic tradition, 
I don't say traditions because I like to say Abrahamic tradition is one tradition, although we have different faiths. But in whole Abrahamic camp and family, this is the family of Abraham, Abraham is our father. So Alhamdulillah, still family is very strong, but we have to be protecting our families. Otherwise, we will be suffering a lot. We see already some signs, but inshallah, we can do more to stop the spread of disease among our families. May Allah inshallah be pleased with you. May Allah accept your mourning for Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.